Right then, I've got a bath running, so I'm gonna make this quick. This is everything you need to know about Season 1 of The Witcher. Welcome to the continent, a land of prophecies, monsters, mages, elves and witches. A witcher is basically a monster hunter. There are a few left in this world, this one is called Geralt of Rivia. So one day Geralt comes across these two, Stregobor and Renfri, who want to kill each other but believe Geralt, the monster hunter, can do the deed for them. They think it's destiny. And Geralt's like, nobody tells me what to do, not even destiny. But then he does get involved to protect the innocent and kills Renfri, who in her last breath mutters The girl in the woods is your destiny. He's like, aha, there's that word again, and then these ungrateful clowns cast him out of town. A bard called Yaskia joins Geralt on his quest and is like, You have got an image problem. I could change the public's tune about you. Geralt gets his ass kicked by a goat man and they are captured by elves. King of the elves, Phil of Andrew, is like, My elders worked with humans, they were slaughtered. He goes to cut Geralt's throat, who is like, whatever, mate, just... Don't call me human. So the elves let them go, after which this song that never lets you sleep was born. You know the words. <laughs> Yaski is like, I did you a favor, so in return you can bodyguard me and Sintra, the most powerful land on the continent. Queen Calanthe is deciding on a suitor to marry her daughter, Princess Pavetta. At this point, the kingdom of Nilfgaard is known to be the less powerful shithole city further south. More on them jokers later. No. Suddenly a cursed porcupine man called Dooney is all like, I have the right to your daughter's hand in marriage. By the law of surprise. For anyone pretending they know what that means. Slay us, if you save someone from a certain death and don't want money, you can claim payment with the law of surprise. Destiny then determines that payment, which is something the other person already possesses, but doesn't know about. Make sense? Well, uh, good. Of course, Geralt saves Dooney from certain death. These guys get married and the curse is lifted. As payment for saving his life, Geralt thinks, I'll give this a whirl, and claims... The law of surprise. It turns out Pavetta is pregnant, and Geralt sits static when he realizes that the baby is for him to claim. Fuck. This wizard man's like, destiny has spoken, if you leave without claiming this child, we're all fucked. And Geralt's like, bullshit. Nobody tells me what to do. But after some years of not being able to sleep, Geralt finds a gin to fix his problem. Not that kind of gin, it's more like a genie. In a bottle. This one attacks Yaskir and Geralt finds help from this saucy mage. Yennefer of Engerberg. Who is Yennefer of Engerberg? Let's go back and find out. Born with a twisted spine, Yennefer was bought by a sorceress named Taseo and taken to Aratuza, a school of magic, where they learn how to use this thing called chaos, which is basically a magical force that mages harness to move stuff and, well, you get the gist. Yennefer's BF, or FB, Istrid is spying on her and tells the Brotherhood She's part elf. Everyone hates elves, so they vote to send Yennefer to the shitty city Nilfgaard. Instead of Fringilla. But Yennefer's like, fuck that, make me powerful and pretty. This guy's like, you won't be able to have children, and she's thinking, that sounds fixable. He's thinking, it's not. And boom, sexy Yennefer swoops in and wins over a king far away from Nilfgaard. Someone has to go there. Fringilla, you up for it? Mm, never mind. Since then, Yennefer has been roaming the land to find a cure for her wounds, so when Geralt says, He was attacked by a djinn. She's like, bingo, baby. But it gets out of control and Geralt makes a wish to save her. The djinn's like, I'm free, I'm finally free. Yennefer's pissed off, but it's like, let's just check to see if it worked. She wakes up in commitment phobe, Geralt has ghosted her. That bastard. Don't judge me. Okay, fair enough. Sometime later, they coincidentally enter the same race to hunt down a dragon. Geralt's like, What are you doing here again? And she's like, uh, duh, dragon hearts cure wombs. We find out that Nilfgaard has returned, burning through the south. With Fringilla as their mage. You remember Fringilla, Yennefer's mate from school. Well, this is her new mate, Kahir, Nilfgaard's commanding officer. He's cool. Meanwhile, Geralt lets this slip. I'd rather use my child surprise as Brookser bait. You have a child surprise. Oh, <laughs> busted, but what the hell is a Brookser? Well, it's basically a, oh, wait, 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 wait. It's definitely too soon to say that. But if you watch season two, you can find out for yourself. Back to these lovebirds. Knowing Geralt abandoned a child when Yennefer is so desperate for one is a bitter pill to swallow. Oh, fuck. Well recovered, Geralt. After much drama, action, and some sweaty sex for good measure, Yennefer realizes that Geralt made a wish with the djinn. That's why we can't escape each other. She's like, it's not love, it's magic. Yennefer dumps Geralt, and Geralt tells Yaskia to do one. Right then. Geralt sees the now enormous army of Nilfgaard and thinks, hmm, maybe I should go to Sintra and check on that kid, who is now Princess Cirilla, or Ciri of Sintra. She's been raised by her grandparents after her actual parents were lost at sea. Geralt gets to Sintra and is like, I'm here to protect the girl. But then Calanthe is like, You and Destiny can both fuck right off. And locks him in the dungeon. Nilfgaard attack, kill the king, and take over the city. 
Meanwhile, the Brotherhood of Mages hear of Nilfgaard attacking Sintra. What? And jump at the chance to help. Who cares? Okay, so only a small group of mages team up to stop Nilfgaard at Sodden Hill. Hold Sodden, save the continent. Back in Sintra, Calanthe on her deathbed is like, maybe Geralt can help. Geralt! Of course, he's fucked off to release his frustrations. In her last breath, she tells Ciri, Find Geralt of Rivia. He is your destiny. And Ciri's like, Geralt of what? She leaves with this hero. Is captured by Kahir, but luckily discovers she has these mega screaming powers, which you could argue are groundbreaking. Siri escapes into the woods, and Kahir is left thinking, How the hell am I going to explain this to my boss? After some days on the run, Siri meets this elf. I'm Dara. They escape Nilfgaard and Kahir again at a refugee camp, arrive at an enchanted forest. <laughs> Siri has a trippy dream, and they bump into this weirdo. <sighs> to which Dara's like, Screw you, bad luck princess, I'm off. Siri goes at it alone and is once again attacked, but after reciting some badass poetry. The time of madness and the time of contempt. We cut to black. Geralt arrives at the refugee camp looking for Siri, gets bitten by this lanky motherfucker, and wakes up tripping his balls off. Turns out this guy saved him and they're off to get help. Siri wakes up and realizes she's exploded or something, killing all these assholes. She goes with this woman who lives near the Battle of Sodden, where Nilfgaard are like, nobody calls me a joker, who's laughing now? And Yennefer's like, me, and burns the shit out of them, saving the day. Fire magic is illegal, by the way. Siri has a weird dream of Geralt and Tissaia looking for Yennefer, wakes up and goes for a stroll in the woods. In that moment, Geralt arrives at the same house Siri was just at, goes into the woods and is finally met with Siri. Destiny prevails. Siri's like, who is Yennefer? And Geralt's like, what the fuck? Right, that's your lot. You should be all prepped now for season two. You are welcome.